Episode of Live Laugh Loans. This is episode number 15. Yay. I'm Myra Talley. And I'm Shelly Panzarella. Welcome back. We took a little short break there for a minute, mm -hmm. um, but we're back and we're ready to give you a lot of information. Yeah, we have so much information. We should always start off with our rates. Where are we yeah. at today? We actually saw a little bit of a decrease. Uh, right now, an FHA mortgage uh, with 3.5% down payment is uh, around 6.99. And a conventional financing, 5% down payment is going to give you approximately 6.75% interest rate. So we've been we've been off for about a month, I feel like, right? Yeah. And in that month, I feel like we, which you as a viewer didn't know because we didn't, we weren't out there reporting our rates, but we went up and then we've come back down. So they may not have seen, we got True. over the seven, right? True. We got back yeah. into like seven and a quarter, seven and a half. Um, and that was on the heels of the Fed fund or the Federal Reserve meeting again that happened in March. Right, right. Because we had one in February. We had one again in March. Yes. Um, and yes, they did increase our Fed fund rate again. They yeah. increased it by a quarter percent. Yeah. There was a lot of controversy around that one, too, because of what recently happened with the um SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank. I, what do we call that? An implosion? Not really, because they got bailed out. But yeah. with everything that happened with that, uh, everybody thought that the Fed would kind of put a pause on increasing interest rates because of that being such a traumatic, emotional thing that happened in our market. But he didn't. Yeah. He stayed he the course. Stay, yeah, exactly. That's Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to stay the course. Uh, expected to do another quarter percent when the next Fed fund, the next Fed Federal Reserve meeting is going to be, which is what in May. Yeah, and then they say that they should be like not. Hopefully, they said that'll be the last one in May, right? Yeah, I think they're going to increase. They're going to still have the meetings, but. Yes. Their thought is as long as things continue, and we are starting to see the inflation go down, their target rate of the 2% is still a ways out there. But the good news is, is we are starting to see that go down. And I think um, there is a lot of talk, again, about recession. Mm -hmm. And so if that is the case, I'm sure that would be one indicator that he's going to um, maybe put a hold on the increases. So that could be good news, although when he did increase the interest rates, usually we see from a, when he increased the short term rates, usually we see an improvement in mortgage rates Correct. right after that. They actually shot up. Right. right. Yeah. Because of that. Um, and I think there's a lot of question around the uh, what they're going to do if other banks happen to go into the same situation that this SVB bank went into, um, not just in, in the United States, but also globally. There's a lot of things happening out there. So definitely something to keep your eye on um, is the interest rates, the short-term rates, and the next Fed fund meeting. Yeah. But moving along, I think we're going to talk about rankings, right? Yeah, we are. Um, the one that I wanted to talk about Let's do it. is... Um, States with the most devoted dogs, and Nevada actually ranked number five. So I thought that was interesting because I love my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Only on Sundays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only after grooming day. <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, same. <laughs> always like way cuter when they get groomed and fluffy and they smell good. Yeah, yours and, especially because she gets to put a nice bandana on oh, and the yeah, little... she gets little bows yes, in her ears. Yeah. Ours yeah. doesn't... Kiko doesn't have that special attention. <laughs> We're lucky if she just gets bathed. <laughs> yeah, she's extra... She's a, a golden doodle. Yeah. So she gets true. extra fluffy and... Like, I really don't let her on furniture at all. But, like, when she gets bathed and I'll put, like, a little blanket, I'll be like, okay, come here, Sunny. Aww, special <laughs> so, treatment day. Super cute. But, yeah, they said that Nevada had the most dog owners who actually left their job because another company let them bring their uh, dog to work or allowed them to work from home so that they can stay with their dog. Wow. So we hear a lot that employers are employees are not even wanting to come into the office so right. maybe that would be one good way to get your employees back into the office uh, yeah allow them to bring hmm. their dog i don't know how do you feel about that uh i'm not opposed to it i think the one the the challenge would be like there's certain people who are super allergic to dogs like i always get worried about um your daughter sometimes she's around uh, dogs or just even for ourselves, our dog is not, is not hypoallergenic or whatever. Mm -hmm. So even when we play with her, if we don't go and wash our hands and we happen to, to 
touch our eyes or whatever, a lot of times I start to get that allergic reaction. So that would be one of my only fear. Well, one of my fears. The second fear is, you know, dogs have, they're not accustomed to being pent up in a cubicle or in an office. So what happens if they have to go to the bathroom? Right. Like, or they happen to go to the bathroom in the office. And then now you have to deal with the smell. And a lot of the times companies, you know, are on, not on the level, yeah. on level floor. So you yeah. go up, upstairs. Yeah. So like. And then imagine you have to have a client come in right after that. Yeah. We actually did have that in our office. Yes. And I think we banned it because right. of the <laughs> incidents. It was a lot um, for one day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I could definitely see how that would be a, um, it would be an incentive. I know for a couple of our employees, they would love to have their dogs at yeah. the office. Jennifer would love yes. if she can bring her dog to For her. sure, for sure. We would probably love to have her dog there yeah. too. I would love to have Sunny there too. Um, Kiko, probably not so much. Kiko's she, a good dog. She's a good dog, but she definitely is one that is going to lick a, lick a person to death. And um, that's really not something that's very distracting in our business. Yeah. She yeah. wouldn't be. But yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. So number five, right? But if you get along with us, you get to pet dogs. So hey, it's a <laughs> win-win. We're number five in Nevada. It might work. Ah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, so I, I want to throw out there that um, Henderson is another ranking here. Henderson ranks as number three, third safest large city in the United States. I love how they say large city. So Henderson is technically considered a large city, uh, which we always go back and forth, but I didn't see Summerlin in this number. And I know there's always that debate on which yeah. city is going to be better to live in. Uh, clearly us being a Hender, Tucky <laughs> residents. <laughs> Is that what they call us? No, Henderson not. residents. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty excited about the fact. And I, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know the difference between summer, Summerlin or whatever, but I do agree that Henderson, to me, I mean, now I can't even say that now because I live in Boulder, Boulder City. City. <laughs> <laughs> but Henderson does have that safe feeling. But I think a lot of it is because of the um, schools and, or not schools, uh, police. Yeah, there's a lot of police. Um, and they also say... I think I read as well that they have a lot of like biking trails. Mm -hmm. So it's a city with the most biker friendly. So they try to not do like biker, like, yeah, not like motorcycle. <laughs> I but, got it. But um, they try to do a lot of things like that. And, you know, it's, it's smaller to where I think I, in my opinion, Henderson is smaller than Summerlin. Yeah. Summerlin is a lot larger. Right. Uh, Summerlin is a lot. It's, it's newer. Um, Henderson has a lot of areas. You have your old Henderson then you have your newer Henderson. Yeah. But still, it's not as new as Summerlin. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the per capita um, that's making it the safest. But I agree to the the bike area. It is I, it is actually different, I think, in Green Valley than it is in Summerlin when it comes to, although Summerlin does have a lot of the trails and things, yeah. but the bike, the aspect of the, like, bike lanes and all that stuff, that's all in Green Valley. In yeah. Green that's Valley because area. Summerlin replaced their biking trails with uh, roundabouts. <laughs> I'm Those are the least favorite things. <laughs> That's actually That's a good ranking for some Why it's not the safest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. True, true, true. You heard it first here. Uh, all right. What's our next ranking that we have? Oh, this one. This is topping the first, uh, uh -huh. topping number one, which is weird. It is uh, Nevada. I'm trying to find it here. Nevada is the number one most stressful state to work in. What does that even mean? I think personally... Well, I mean, if you think of Nevada and whole, you have like the biggest little cities, right? You have Las Vegas, you have Reno, yeah. but what populates those cities are like hotel casinos and they're technically 24 hours. Uh, true. Maybe it's like a hustle bustle, always on the go type of thing. You don't yeah. know if somebody works graveyard or so it can be very stressful to like work life balance and kids and stuff like that. True. True. That would make sense. Although I think after COVID we have seen a lot of the places, not the hotel side of it, but I feel like a lot of the restaurants and things, they've actually um, reduced their hours. So they're mm -hmm. not, they're not open maybe till three in the morning and they're closing at 11 yeah. um, versus being open or even not even being 24 hours. Yeah. Or open. just being closed in period. Like there's some restaurants where you would just go any day of the week, yeah. you know, for lunch or dinner. And then you started walking up to the restaurant and it's like, Oh, we're closed Mondays and Tuesdays now. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? I'm hungry on Mondays. And exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think a lot of that is the staffing stuff yeah. that's happening too, but yeah, it's saying your um, overall rank was Nevada, 
work related stress rank. So that probably attributes to the hours, right? Mm -hmm. If you're open 24 hours, we do also have a lot of uh, like labor. So the construction side of it, we do have a lot of construction happening right now. A lot. And that happens usually at night, right? Because, yeah. you know, the daytime we've got all the hustle and bustle. Um, money related stress rank is number eight. So clearly we don't have money issues. We just have work. Yeah. <laughs> like that's way at the bottom. Yeah. Of the and then I guess this is good. Number, we rank number 11 uh, with health related stress rank, mm -hmm. which what would be health related stress rank? I'm going to deep dive deeper into here to figure out what that is. Um, I mean, it could be like medical conditions. It could be because of it. Yeah, maybe. Work-related. So our work-related stress ranking system came from national data on the average hours work per week. So that does, that would mean, you know, for those working the 24 sevens mm -hmm. or open 24 seven, you do have an, you do have the ability and usually most of your employers, especially with where the um, employment is today is, is um, looking to have everybody work as often as they can. Yeah. And they don't have as many employees on staff anymore. Right. So they still need to fill in those items. And then money-related stress is experienced by each state um, was found by looking at their average hourly earnings. So that's kind of good news. So we're ranked number eight in that. So that means that our hourly earnings are actually a little bit higher. Maybe that also is induced by some of the tip earners yeah, that we have. True. Um, and then but I think it also kind of goes back to where Nevada the cost of living is not as high as other places. True. To where somebody lived in California and made exactly what they're making here, it's not going to be enough for them over there just yeah. because their cost of living is so much higher. Yeah, and then even including the state tax, right? So True. huge difference is state income tax, which you don't realize the difference in that until you actually have some, like some of our clients who come in from California, they're like, I'm getting a pay raise even though it's the mm -hmm. same hourly rate. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? They had to pay state income tax, which we don't have. And I think our property taxes are lower. Mm -hmm. I heard that they're doing a, an increase in, I think, L.A. and San Diego, where they're, the transfer tax is actually going to be even higher on the higher end homes, which is, I and I know it's to fund the state, but we don't have, like, ours is a flat number, and it's been that way for many years Yeah, for our transfer tax. The health-related stress, so how much you move, has been repeatedly shown to influence how you feel. So they deciphered the percentage of adults who walked or biked to work <laughs> that met the CDC's aerobic and muscle strengthening guidelines. So we were actually ranked low in this number. So we were number 11. So that means that we don't, many of our people do not uh, walk or bike. Well, can you imagine walking or biking today? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on where you work. I definitely... Boulder City, yeah, oh, right, no, to the no. northwest side of town. What is that, like 40 miles, 45 miles for you? Yeah. I mean, it took us 30 minutes just to get here from, from the Hennessy, district, though. Yes, yeah. 32 minutes. Driving. Exactly. Driving a little bit fast, if anybody um, in the Panzarella family is watching, just a little bit fast. Um, but, yeah, but speaking of that, though, there are, um, from a housing standpoint, there's this walk score yes. that talks about, you know, and so some people now are like, well, what's the walk score on the house? I'm oh, like, have you had somebody ask you? Yes. Wow. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what does that even mean? I have to go look at that, look that up. But their goal was to be able to walk to the grocery store, mm -hmm. to um, food places, restaurants, things like that. Uh, the higher, the better. I think I'm, my, my little neighborhood might have a good walk score. You, you do. I th yeah. remember... Nobody does it nowadays, but when we had the lockdown and nobody can go anywhere, I remember how refreshing it was to actually see people outside walking to the grocery store and then you see, you know, yeah. carrying the bags, but that was like what everybody did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they stopped doing that. Yeah. So how long would it take for you to get to your store? To the grocery um, store? Maybe 20 minutes. And that's like at a slow, it's maybe a mile. Yeah. So when we had to do it, um, it took us about an hour and a half because it's like four miles and it's uphill all the way we, in the snow without shoes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so ours is, and we don't really have, like you have some great restaurants around yours, like directly across you have yeah. a really good uh, brunch spot. Um, but then your grocery store and then gas station too. You're like, yeah. right. You're very, you have a very, I'm sure you have a very high even, walk score. Even like a, like a target. Would probably be. Would you walk like to your target? Yeah. yeah. 
It, you could, yeah. Back in the days when you had nothing else to do but just hang out and get out of the house, do you remember? It'd be like, okay, I'm going to get out of the house. I'm going to go grocery That's shopping. That's a good idea. <laughs> the next time the kids say, I'm going to go to Target to buy something, okay, Ooh. let's go walking. Ooh. And if they say yes, let's go. Yeah, I could just see your daughters right now. No, mommy, no. Like, our video. Can we take the electric scooter? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to pull in your address right here. Hold on. Or actually, I'm going to pull in. So it is walkscore.com, and all you have to do is put in your um, address. Uh -huh. I'm going to put in my... Yeah, schools are close. Yeah. I mean, the high school is probably going to be the, the furthest away. Yeah. That's probably three miles away. Yeah. So you come up with a rank, uh, very walkable, 74. Let me see what mine is. This is my... And does it go up to 100? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a little walkable. I mean... Yeah, there's some transit in there, but you do have, that's a high walk square, I think, okay, 74. Let's see what mine is. Go. It's thinking. It's thinking a lot. That's how bad it is. <laughs> All right, so one other thing that we wanted to talk about with respect to interest rates, we are starting to see, um, they, they did make a change in affordability to help with the affordability issues. So FHA and in fact VA yeah. has improved or reduced their mortgage uh, insurance fee. Yeah. So FHA will have a standard 0.85 fee that they charge uh, every single month based off of your loan amount. And they'll charge you that as a monthly mortgage insurance. So they have now for any loans after, I want to say it was like March 23rd, mm -hmm. um, they now have reduced it to 0.55. So that literally could be a savings of like a hundred plus dollars per month, depending on your actual loan amount. So that's, that, I mean, all the rates, you know, are higher. That's a, a definite break that you're getting in your mortgage payment. Yeah. And whether you see it as a mortgage payment incentive or it'll help you to increase your sales price, right? Because yes. now you don't have as much of a mortgage insurance payment so that helps you to qualify for more so i really do think that was one great thing that they gave to or one great incentive that they made um for fha and then yeah. va as well now uh, not as much but still a significant amount in the uh funding fee right they reduced their funding fee by 0.15 mm -hmm. Um, whether it's first time user or if you've used it multiple times, which ultimately means that your loan amount would be reduced. So that would be probably savings of like 25 to $50, depending yeah. on, on loan amount, still no mortgage insurance on that. So that is one way that the government has, um, helped to make affordability. Yeah, and I think it's really good because when you think about it, FHA, when you're paying a mortgage insurance, that mortgage insurance is on your loan for the entire life of the loan until yeah, you're done. True. If you wanted to remove your mortgage insurance, you would have to refinance into a conventional loan yep. and have at least 20% equity. So a lot of the times people think that once they reach that 20% equity, you know, they can remove that mortgage insurance. Well, if you're in an FHA loan, that's not the case. You actually have to refinance. Yeah. And in fact, right now we are having, you know, a lot of our clients that closed with us a few years ago that utilized FHA financing, they're trying to come back to us to try because they've got equity, right? Yeah. Now they want to they want to get rid of that mortgage insurance, but because their rates were so much lower then, it actually doesn't make sense for them today to right. um, not to yet, yet. not least. yet. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, though, I think with the Fed fund rates coming again in May, make sure you stay tuned to our episode um, in May because we will definitely report what happens with that. And for some reason, May tenth seems to be a date that a lot of uh, economists or our special economist Barry yeah. Habib is talking about that that would be um, the turning point. A, type yes. Thing. Yeah. And I, and I think that's, we'll talk about on the, our next episode, we're going to talk about um, inventory and where we're at and what that's going to look like if and when rates do decrease mm -hmm. um, and where we are today. But to circle back to our walk score. So yours was 74, mine is six. Oh so that, gosh. that would make sense for your 20 minute walk to the grocery store yes. in my hour in a, well, probably uh, an hour just because we, yeah, we, I don't know how, why it would take us an hour, but um, yeah, so that's a huge difference. So wow. you have a higher, um, so from a sellability standpoint, if somebody was really interested in their walk score, your home would probably sell, um, it would have a greater opportunity to sell. Walk score. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Six. I know. Jeez. See, it tastes for, well, we only have a gas station next to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the ghetto. I'm just kidding. Oh, we do have a school. We do have a school oh, okay. that's nearby, but one school. 
elementary uh -huh. that she's already moved on to. Um, so spring break, we had spring break this yes. uh, couple oh, weeks ago. Yes, what did you do did. for spring break? I Same thing. We just, we took the kids to Disneyland. I think it was like, we were there for four days. It was way too busy, but we still had a great time. Yeah. So what did what, you do? What was the weather like? Cold. It was cold? Oh, rainy. Wait. Yes, cold and rainy. It's been unusually cold for us here in Vegas. And then they that was like monsoon season down there, right? I heard they had flooding and everything. Yeah, they did. And the drive back actually was so scary. Like, yeah. we saw two semis, like, jackknifed, oh like, gosh. on the freeway. One of them was, like, um, like, a shipping truck. So there was, like, boxes all over the freeway. It was on the opposite side of us, luckily. So you can grab them? I'm just no, kidding. No, <laughs> I know. I wanted to get out and see if I can find something good. No. But that was scary, and there was, like, all these other accidents, and I was telling my husband, I'm like, hey, just pull over, we'll stay another night, like, what's the whole point of, you know, driving through this? I got this. I mean, we made it home safe, yeah. thankfully, but that was really it's scary. Yeah, yeah, I think it's also because it's dark, too, if you're driving at night. Like, they don't, it's not like they've got a ton of um, It was during lighting. the day. Oh, it was? Yeah. And it was still dark? It or was just like, raining? Actually, the visibility was so bad. Oh. Um, people were driving with their like um, emergency lights on, just because all the um, fog or the just you know the clouds. We were literally driving like through yeah. the clouds, and they were so low. And it was it was really scary for me. Yeah. <laughs> Probably George too. I'm but sure. wait, he just I went wanna... here. What did you do for your? So break? we went to uh, Australia. We went to New Zealand actually. For um, for those of you who love Harry Styles. I'm a Harry Styler now. My daughter's going to be like, oh, my gosh. Uh, we actually went to New Zealand. We did see Harry Styles in New Zealand. And we took Sydney to her city of where she was actually not not created. <laughs> we wanted when my husband went over 20 years ago um, for a honeymoon. And we vowed that we would name our firstborn Aww. after that beautiful Sydney. So city named Sydney. And she so, fell in love with it too, right? She did. Yeah. She's actually, as she's looking at these di different colleges, which stay tuned because she's going to be making, she's committing uh, end of this month. And so she was looking to see if she could study abroad in oh, Australia. Yeah. Can you believe that? Like, how can I buy a house in Australia? Well, we'll talk about the um, mortgages and stuff like that up there. But yeah, we went to Sydney, Australia. We went to Slipless Paradise. We went up to Brisbane, um, Sunshine Coast. And then we went to Cairns. We, we got to swim in the Great Barrier Reef. Had a nice little tan. We saw little baby turtles. Um, we saw a manta ray. We saw a swim with a shark. Like, literally, the shark was swimming down below and I think it was like 12 foot uh 12 foot shark by the time Rich and Sydney got there they thought it was like a three foot shark <laughs> but um a lot of different um fish out there so beautiful the water was amazing you haven't been I know everybody talks about the flight out there take the red eye going out stay up you'll the jet lag aspect of it um actually which you know there because we were what 13 mm -hmm. a day and a half almost a, a, ahead of you um, it's, it, to me, it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, it was a beautiful, Sydney is a beautiful city actually, and it would definitely be, it's a worthwhile trip. I would go back out there again. Um, food and everything was much better this go around. Like, we actually ate at restaurants instead of Big Tom Holtz when we went 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, that was our spring break, and now we're on the home stretch to graduation. Oh, goodness, I can't believe that. I know, crazy, crazy. Well, that's all that we have for this episode. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for our next episode as we as we share who's moved into the city and received the keys to the city. Also, what's going on with our housing inventory, and of course, we'll keep you updated on rates. And that is our episode for today. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Make sure that you save this information and pass this along to any of your friends who have interest in the FHA mortgage insurance premium and where our daily rates are. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you.